Hi everyone, welcome to episode 47 of the Airy Knits podcast. My name is Ariel and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting and spinning on for the last week, or in this case, the last two weeks since I did not film last weekend. I miss you guys. It feels like it's been a while. It's been two weeks and I have a lot of updates to share with all of you and lots of exciting things. Although I feel like I, oh, I always say that, but knitting and spinning has, it's just always so much fun. So let's just get started because I feel like this might be a long video. I have finished objects. I have lots of works in progress to talk about lots of spinning updates and the reason why I did not film last weekend was because me and my knitting friends all went on a little like getaway to Bellingham here in Washington and we like stayed in an Airbnb together we knit we ate good food and went to some yarn stores and yeah, we just had a whole kind of like yarny knitting weekend, which was so much fun. I had such a great time. So we will talk about that, more about that uh, towards the end of the video. But for now, we've got lots of stuff to go through. So let's get started with what we usually talk about first, which is what I am wearing. It is also a finished object. This is my friendship pullover. It is a pattern by Amy Schur. And the yarn I use is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway Plum Clay. And I knit size A. I used US 5 needles for the ribbing and US 7 for the rest of the main body. And my finished measurements, I got 36 inches in circumference, which gives me six inches of positive ease. And the final measurements circumference wise is I think about like three inches larger than the pattern measurements for the size. But that's mostly probably because when I blocked it, I did, I was like, I want the sweater to be more on the positive E size. So I, I did stretch it. Uh, I didn't like, I wouldn't say I aggressively blocked it, but I did stretch it width wise because I did want to make sure that it gave me lots of room. So yeah, but other than that, like the length and everything, like it all fits really well. So I will stand up now to show you the finished object. Let me push back my chair a little bit. So here it is. Let me do kind of like a, I don't know, it's always awkward to just like hold out your arms like this, but I'm kind of realizing that it might be good just so that because people when you like pose for finished object pictures kind of or at least for me I'm like oh I really want cute pictures but sometimes when I'm looking at other people's pictures I'm like yes I love the cute pictures but I also sometimes I'm like I just want to see what the finished object looks like so we'll 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 stand in ways hopefully that will help you Kind of better see what this sweater looks like. So it is actually worked bottom up, but it is like a, I think it's called a compound raglan, as you can see here. And then maybe if I turn backwards around. And I, I made no modifications to this pattern, I believe. So I knit it to pattern with like the number of rows or rounds and I didn't lengthen anything. So yeah, so the body, I just knit it to wherever it said to knit to, sleeves, same thing. I really like the length. I was worried that it might be a tad cropped, but it is not, I would say. So my belly button is like right here. So I think that the ribbing is pretty much right where, like right under my belly button kind of. So that kind of works out really well. I love how the cape bow pattern turned out. The sleeve length is perfect and those I did also to pattern. And then, oh, as far as options, because there are options for the neckline, 
I just followed the instructions for the folded over neckband. So the ribbed neckband, you pick up and knit it at the end and you knit it to four inches and then you can choose to either keep it as like a really high funnel neck, which I just don't think is the right thing for me. I was not, it, the look did not appeal to me. So I folded it in half. So this is two inches of ribbing. So it's folded in half and then sewn on the inside. And I like how it looks. I like how it lays. I was, I did see some other pictures of this pullover with the neckband and it kind of, for some people, the neckline, actually too bad my hair is kind of blocking it, but I feel like in some pictures, actually, some pictures I feel like the neck neckline kind of stood up a bit more and I didn't really care for that. So I'm really glad that mine's came out pretty like flat to my neck or body. And I like that it's not, I don't like anything that kind of reaches the middle of my neck. So that's also why I opt opted out of doing the really long funnel neck. Uh, but yeah, I just overall really like the fit of this sweater. It was such a fun knit. As every single pattern that I've knit of Amy Schur's, they've all just been really enjoyable. Uh, the yarn I really like. I think it was a great pick for this pattern because you can, the the yarn is, I, I don't want to say rustic, but it does kind of like kind of hold its shape. So for cables, I feel like that works out really well to show off the cables. And I like the color. I think it's very wearable for me and it's very cozy. It is not scratchy. It is not itchy, but it feels just nice and sturdy <laughs> that it can hold up to a lot of wear. So Overall, very happy with this knit and I would highly recommend it. Oh, and before I move on, this was a kind of like really casual knit along with my friend Megan. She also has a YouTube podcast that you should definitely check out if you haven't already. She is, her podcast name is A Naughty Mess. I will have it in the description down below. She is the best and we both made this sweater together and it's just so much fun knitting things together with people and matching and I guess I'll say it here I was gonna wait until we talked about like the weekend or knitting weekend we had last weekend but we were both like because this casual knit along we were like our estimated we wanted to be finished by October 20th which was yesterday today that I'm filming is October 21st but but then we were like, we were both kind of close to finishing. And we we're like, what if we finished before our knitting weekend away? Because then we can get really cute pictures together. And also our friend Sylvan already finished her friendship pullover. And we we're like, we could all bring them and get really cute pictures together in all of our matching pullovers. So that's what we did. We had them. We like really kind of like right up till the day because we were like we have to also block it and because it is a I used a worsted weight yarn it just dries a little slower it's also a lot cooler now here in Seattle so it takes things longer to dry just a little bit so me and Megan were both like all right we got <laughs> we got to make sure we get this thing finished and blocked and dried before we go on our weekend. So anyway, we were able to accomplish that. So we got some really cute pictures together and it makes me really happy. So yeah, so that is the friendship pullover and it just makes me very happy. Lots of good memories now with this sweater, which is really fun. Okay, so on to our next finished object. I have a second finished object this week, which makes me very happy. Well, I guess this was finished object for last week, but I didn't film last week, so we're talking about it now. But for this week, I do have a finished object. It is a test knit, and this is my Kalini blouse, patterned by Coley of Paisley Knits. 
and let me just hold it up. I will plan on wearing this for next podcast. So here it is. And I'll, I'll hold it up again while I talk more about it. But so the yarn I used is Woolberry Fiber Co. The Berry Surrey Base in the colorway I Smell Snow. And I knit size one and I used US six needles for this. So I'll hold it up again. And yeah, here it is. I love a good Surrey sweater. I will want to talk more about it when I wear it in the next video. So I, I'll i probably be repeating myself, but oh, okay. So I was like, I feel like I've talked about this before. So I'm like, new things to share. Okay, but if you're new, uh, this is done in a Irish moss stitch or seed stitch. As you can see, so it's an all over textured sweater. And I used two strands of Surrey held together to make this. And so it is a very nice and fluffy, cozy sweater. I will say, I so I didn't, again, I didn't take measurements of this yet, but it is nice and oversized on me. And I did make a few modifications. So one is that for the sleeves, they are knit straight with no decreases all the way until the cuff. And for me, I personally don't like cuffs that are really wide. And so the modification I made was to decrease, do a rapid decrease right at the end. So I just did, once I was done, I liked the length of the sleeve, I did a knit two together all the way around so that it decreased the number of stitches in half. And then I finished off with the I-cord bind off. And for the sleeves, I went down a needle size to for the I-cord bind off for the sleeves. And so you can see that here. So it kind of makes like a balloon sleeve, which I think is really cute. And then I also sized down my needles to do the V-neck I-cord just because it was... It is kind of a low v-neck on me and I didn't want it to get any lower. Like if anything, I kind of wanted it to be brought up a little bit. And so I think mine didn't, I kind of have a tendency for my I-cord bind offs to be really loose. Uh, so even though I sized down, I think it, it kept its shape. I don't think it really made everything rise up but it kept its shape and so we're all good there. And then the only thing, and then the, for the hem, the hem was the only I-cord bind off that I did not change my needle size for. So I just use the same needle size as the body to bind, do the I-cord bind off at the hem. And then I think uh, body length wise from the underarm to the hem, I did not knit for as long as the pattern states. I just knit until I like the length and so it is a little bit shorter. So my yardage is probably a little less than the estimated yardage in the pattern. So that is my finished Kalani blouse. It is going to be something I think I wear over a lot of things and just like something to easily put over just like if I'm wearing like a tank top or a t-shirt or something to just keep me nice and warm when it gets cold. And I'm very happy that the weather is very sweater friendly right now because I seriously want all of the Surrey sweaters. So I finally, I have a finished Surrey sweater, which is really fun. So here it is. Again, I will wear this. I do plan on wearing this in the next podcast episode. So just keep an eye out for that because then you can better see like the fit and stuff like that. But really like how this came out on the yarn. The color looks really cute on this. I oh, I just think it's so cute. It's very subtle and I think for a nice oversized sweater I just like something that's like gray but with like hints of like the blue and pink and yeah. It's just so cozy and soft. So that is 
my second finished object for this video, which is a test knit. So that's very exciting. And yeah, let's move on to our works in progress. And so, okay, this means test knit done. And then I only have one more test knit on my needles. So let's talk about that one. Okay, I do. I have so many things to talk about in this video. And so they're all kind of just like piled on a chair here. Any wrong move will topple everything over. Okay, I have made a lot of progress on this test knit. And also because I'm in a very like, there are so many things I want to cast on, but I am like, Ariel, you need to finish things that are already on your needles. Also because I don't have any more available needles to cast on the things I want to. So we're feeling, where me i i am feeling like finishing a lot of things and so i just want to make a lot of progress okay so this is my test knit of the ashling sweater by maddie mo look at that we have a finished body and a neck band uh okay first first things first yarn i am using woolberry fiber coat berry surrey in the colorway hello autumn and for this pattern, it is a strangle, strangle, single strand of Surrey. It's not two strands held together. It is just one. And I am knitting size two. I'm using US two and a half needles for the ribbing and US three for the rest of the main body. And I have finished, I think, okay. I have a lot of stitch markers on here just for like counting rows and stuff. But I believe last time we talked, I was at this stitch marker in the front. I was, this is another bottom up sweater. So I was here, finished working the front flat, joined the shoulders for the front and back, and then picked up for the neckband and I finished it. It is so fluffy and it's so cute. And then I just cast on, cast on, picked up stitches for the sleeve. And by, by that, I mean, it's literally just the pickup and I did not knit on the sleeve yet. But the needles are there. It's ready for me to start the sleeve. And so we are going to start the sleeve soon because that means all that I have left for the sweater is to knit the two sleeves. And I feel like that should feel pretty doable. I don't feel like I'm ever really on sleeve island. I feel like I used to dread the sleeves, but lately I just feel like they can sometimes go by fast. So I'm feeling pretty good about this sweater. It looks so cute actually just like this too. Uh, let me turn it around. Not that it looks any different on the back, but there is shaping around the neckline so that there is a clear like front and back as you can see. The neck, ba neck band is folded over so it has just kind of like that double squishy goodness of the Surrey, which I think is really cute. And I'm very excited about this sweater. To be honest, I was kind of losing steam on it working on the body, but now that it like actually kind of looks like a sweater, it makes me very excited for the finished object. It feels so soft and fluffy and airy and just like so fluffy. Uh, every time I show this, I feel like I need to show the hem. And now that we have like an actual armhole, like, I don't know, now you can see like what the side of the sweater will actually look like. I love this split hem that has like the back is longer than the front and then it has like this overlapping section here it is just so cute and i think now that the leaves outside on the trees are also turning like that orangey color like i feel like this sweater just really screams autumn and i know the colorway is called hello autumn and it's just perfect and it's like fitting the mood fitting what what the outside world looks like right now and yeah it just makes me overall 
very happy and it's so cozy. It's so soft to work on. So yeah, I'm just made good progress. Want to work on some sleeves and yeah. So next time we'll see how much of the sleeves I get done on this, but I would like to finish this relatively soon. I think the test knit deadline is sometime in November. So, I mean, we're already at the end of October, which is absolutely crazy to me. Like, where did the time go? <sighs> but we're fine. We're good on time. So, but yeah, I always like to finish my test knits with a good amount of time or a decent amount of time before the deadline, just so that I'm not stressed because I don't want to be stressed for test knits. But yeah, okay, so that is the progress on my only test knit that I have on my needles. I am going to try to stay away from test knits for maybe some time again. I know earlier this year there was a period where I like did not have any test knits. And before that, I mean, when I started test knitting last year, in like January, I think was my very, very first test knit. I just like test knitted. I was, there was never a period of time where I was not test knitting something. And then sometime this year, maybe during the summer was when I had no test knits. And I was able to actually work on projects that I have been wanting to work on for a while. And that was really nice. And I, I do like the test knits that I have been working on. But yeah, there's, again, there's so much patterns I want to make that are already out. So yeah, after this test net, I think I will probably try to take a break from test nets, just so I can work on all of the other things I want to work on as well. But all right, next work in progress. Oh, this one. Okay. This one might be my closest the sweater that I am the closest to finishing right now. <sighs> Guys, this is my tessellated pullover. Okay, I'm pretty sure it does not look any different, maybe. Actually, no. I was trying to think. What did I do from last time? Because I think last time I did have a finished sleeve, so that's not a surprise. What I did do was finish the neckband though. And so now we finally have something that if I just like held this off to the side like this and you didn't know that there wasn't a second sleeve, like it would look mostly finished besides the ends that I need to weave in. But yeah, I got myself to finish the neckband for this because I really just wanted to have that finished look in the neckband, I think, I think a lot of people feel this way too, but like when you're working on a project, uh, at, at least for me, I like to have the neckband finished before I like completely finish. Like I don't like saving the neckband for the end because I, while I'm working on it, I want to see it as it, as it will look in the end. And also just like showing it looks so much better with a neckband in and attached and so that is what I did. I did not to pick up for my second sleeve as you can see but man for this one I just have to finish this sleeve now which feels very doable uh, but if you recall from before I I love how the sweater looks and the knitting of it isn't hard, but the yarn management for this is just like, I do not enjoy it. It might be, it probably would be the only reason I not make this sweater again, or at least anytime soon, because it uses three different yarns at the same time. But when you're knitting, each round, you are only working with one yarn at a time. So it is mosaic knitting. It is not color work knitting. And I love, I love how it looks, but yeah, the yarn management really just not, not my thing, but, and so yeah, so for working in the sleeve, because each round is so small, like each round I have to like rearrange my yarn so that it doesn't get all tangled. So, but we are almost there, just one more sleeve. I can do it, I, er 
already made one sleeve, so I can do it again a second time. But yeah, so this is tessellated pullover. Oh my gosh, I didn't even talk about the yarn. The yarn I'm using is Farmer Daughter Fibers Spinster's Daughter in the colorway York. That's the main color. It is the dark green main color here. And then I am also using Spin Cycle yarn dyed in the wool in the colorway Every Rose, which is the color changing yarn that you see here. Very pretty. And then the Surrey that you maybe can see the fluff is Farmer Daughter Fibers O Dang in the colorway clay. I am knitting size one and I am using US2 and US4 needles for this project. So yeah, it's going well. It's just going a little slow, but I this this is definitely I can finish this before the end of this year. I don't want to put it off for any longer than that, so that is, I'm saying it now, it will be done before the end of this year. But the colors are so cute. It's very good. Very cute. Okay. So that is the update on my tessellated pullover. Oh, I know that Rhinebeck is happening this weekend. It's happening as we speak. And this pattern was like Andrea Maury's Oh, did I even say this? This is a pattern by Andrew Mowry, by the way. So anyway, this was Andrew Mowry's pattern for like the Rhinebeck sweater for An Andrew Mowry. And so I think a lot of people made this and there is a vest version of this as well. A lot of people have made this. I was like, I am not going to Rhinebeck, but I'll join along and make this. And I did not finish by this weekend, obviously, as you can see, but Anyway, that's that. That's just, you know, just some small bits of information, more information about the sweater. But anyway, it's very cute. But the yarn management. Oof. Okay, enough about that. Next up. Oh, okay. Before I talk about the next project, I am going to take a sip of my tea, which I have in my Explorer Knits mug. How do I show it this way? Yes. Mm. Because I feel like we're not even halfway done talking about the things and I already feel my throat getting all getting all dry. So Okay. All right. Next up. Okay, things are toppling off of my my yarn tower here. Okay, but that's okay. We are going to keep moving along. This is my Mackenzie scarf by Sar Sari Nordland. I've made good progress on this. I actually really enjoy working on this project. I was a little worried that I would kind of like hate it only because like I think it's really cute but I was like have I made a long scarf where it is just a sh rectangular strip, a very long one. Uh, like ha when was the last time I did that? And so I was really worried I was going to get bored. Uh, but I'm very much enjoying this process. I think it's because it's not the same thing every row. It changes just a little bit. So as you can maybe see, this is a, it's a two color brioche scarf. So this is like the dark side and this is the light side. So I am using two yarn colors for this. I, both are Olivia and Oliver Fibers Classic Sock Base in the colorway Feather, which is this white cream speckled color. And then the darker color, the brown, brownie color is Woodland. And I think they work so well together. I'm so proud of myself <laughs> for this color combination. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's like one is a white and one is a brown, so it would work, but I'm very happy with it. And I am using US4 needles, which I believe is the recommended needle size for this. And anyway, so it is a two color brioche, but there is like a diagonal garter 
stitch line that goes across. And I think that there might be either four or five of these. So this is the first one. And then once it reaches like the edge, we'll just restart with another strip. And so that pattern continues on for the entire scarf. And I think just that little extra like interest while you're knitting. So like you do have to pay attention in terms of like, oh, okay. The way that this, this garter stitch like diagonal works is like you do increases and decreases at both ends to like continue it slanted this way. So just having to pay attention to that little part, uh, I think just adds to it or adds to like the interest and make it not boring to work on. So I feel like because of the brioche, it's a very, it's a very meditative knit for me. It's very relaxing. And so actually, let me show you my stitch marker from last time. So from last time I was here. And so I worked a pretty good amount on this scarf. And yes, I've got a long, long way more to go on this, but I'm enjoying the process of this. And I think that that is, that's a big win for me. So I would like to have this done before the weather gets warm again, which I think is very doable because, I mean, that would mean, I don't know, when does it, I'm like, how many years have I lived here in Seattle and I still don't really know when the weather gets warm again and when it gets hot again, but I think maybe like April, March, I think is still cold. And we're at the end of October. There's still two more months left in the year. And then like three, four more in the new year. I can definitely finish finish this before that, I think. So anyway, just wanted to show a quick progress update on this because it's looking really cute and it's just, it's really squishy, it's really drapey. And so I think it'll be just a really great scarf to wear. And my color choices, I feel like will lend itself well to kind of wearing with anything or like most most colors and so very happy about that so yes okay that is the Mackenzie okay next up is my oh, my Manhattan hat light pattern by Tori Yu and I've made some progress. This was one of the projects that I brought on the weekend trip. We had our knitting weekend trip last weekend and so I was able to get some rows in. So that's my stitch marker from last time and yeah, made some progress. This is knit using my hand spun yarn which is so fun and it feels so special because of it. The hand spun yarn that I'm using, it's a BFL and I, it was the whole Latte Love colorway from Art and Alchemy Fiber Arts. And I am now, so I spun this on my electric eel wheel Nano, which is like a small e-spinner. And so the entire four ounce braid that I spun I had to split it up into three. And so I finally reached my second like ball of yarn. And so you can see that this is what it looks like. Um, my friends had to help me untangle this because I was dumb and I used this one to swatch and then I unwound it or like I, I frogged the swatch and I wound the yarn back up on here. And yeah, it just ended up being a mess, but my friends helped me to find both ends and figured it out. So thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, so this is one of them. This is, I think, the more pink colored of the three. And so I'm very happy that I got to the second ball here because, so that's where like you finally see some pink is where I joined for the the second ball, but like one ball, which is like one third ish of my hand spun yarn in this color knit this much. And so I am, 
I wanted to do a double folded brim for this hat, but I was like, if I don't have enough yarn to do it, then that's fine. But I think I will have enough yarn to do it because yeah, I mean, if I, so this is folded once, I can fold it again. And I'm like, j I just started my, my second yarn, so. And I think I think I will be able to have a double fold, which is fun and also good because I want to use up as much yarn as I can. And yeah, this is what it looks like. I'm actually really surprised at how soft this BFL feels because for some reason I had this. I don't know why I thought BFL was going to be really scratchy. I don't know if it was just this specific BFL I got for making this yarn or if it the way I spun it helped it be soft because I possibly underspun this but it feels quite nice or a lot a lot less scratchy than I thought it was going to be so yeah so that's pretty cool as you can see there's like a lot of like striping happening and I think that's just like how the hand spun yarn kind of looks but it's really cute. I'm really into it and just very happy with it. I am making the adult small size and I'm using US 2 needles for this so it will probably fit. Should I try and put it over my head right now even though it's just like nothing? Yes, I think the answer is yes. I know, okay. I mean it'll end up being like folded twice so I don't have enough length for that but oh I think it's going to be really cute okay now my hair is a mess I think it's going to be really cute so I know it's taking me a long time to make this but it's just because it's one by one rib and don't really like ribbing that much so and because I want to do a double fold like that just means even more knitting on this just going to be a longer tube so anyway it's a good travel project just because it's so small so and you, there's like no need to worry about increase or decreasing all the way up until the end so you know you don't really have to think you don't have to do anything besides one by one rib in the round so that is our quick progress update on my first hand spun yarn project and then, oh man, we've got more projects. Okay, next up, we've got the superlative sweater by Samantha Guerin. Don't know how to say her last name. And here it is. Probably looks the same from last time because I didn't make that much progress, but I made some, so that's why it's showing up here. Okay. I think my Alexa just talked. Uh, okay, so the yarn I'm using is Explore Knits, Boo Clay DK in the colorway Oxide, and I am knitting size two, and I'm using US four needles. I believe I had to size down because, yeah, my gauge was quite off for this one, and yeah, this is what I have so far, I think. So I have joined in the round. I think that's what I showed last time. And I literally maybe just worked like four rounds since the last time. But it's really cozy. It's really soft. I do, I knit slower with boucle just because of the, how the yarn is. It's just very like loopy. Oh, it's probably not going to focus, but it is very loopy. So when you have... I don't know, like knitting on it, it's just like you have to make sure you don't catch, like you don't miss the loop and you're kind of just like, you think you got it, but you're actually just like caught the loop of yarn, but not the actual strand of yarn. So it's going a little bit slower, but honestly, it doesn't really bother me. Like I do enjoy knitting on it. It's just, there's been a lot of other projects that I've wanted to knit on otherwise. And so I've just been trying to make some slow progress on it. Uh, me and my friend Katie are making the exact same. Like we're both, we both have oxide and we're both making the superlative sweater. So we're going to be extra twinning on this 
sweater. And so that's keeping me motivated to continue working on this because we will eventually, like we will both eventually at some point have it finished at the same, or like, cause I want to take really cute pictures of our twinning, twinning sweaters. But yeah, it's keeping me motivated because I would like to finish it close to the same time she finishes it. So yeah. Anyway, this is what it looks like and it is very cute and so soft and squishy. I love boucle. I, the knitting on it doesn't, like it's not as fast as like normal yarn, but I can deal with it. And it's the end product for me that is just like so good. The end product of boucle knits, I think is just the coziest thing and yeah that's what's keeping me also going through with this like it it's really not a bother but i think i really flew by on joining i really wanted to just like join in the round so that i wouldn't have to worry about this also because okay sorry i'm kind of all over the place with my thoughts today but knitting with boucle is very hard to count anything so when I started, I wanted to, in one sitting, do any of the pieces that required repeats, increases, uh, so that I wouldn't forget what I was doing if I had to put it down. So that's kind of why I think I did the front and back before joining in the round. Like, I got that done really fast because I wanted to get those pieces done in one sitting. But now that I'm in the round, I can just like knit on it a little bit, put it down and then pick it back up and not really worry about where I was. And so that's kind of been my strategy. But yeah, this is my boucle sweater and I love the color. Such a good color. So yeah, so that is my superlative sweater. Okay, I need another tea break. Okay, next up. Oh, this is a update on a project that I don't think I've talked about. I say in a while, but maybe it was just like three weeks or maybe like, you know, three videos. Uh, this is my Asu sweater by Ozuko, and so if this, if you haven't seen this sweater, it is a, it is a sweater that is worked sideways flat, and so you start at the front middle, and then you work, you're kind of like working around the body, and so right now I am working on the back, and I have switched to my second color and this sweater is also really cool because it is like two different colors like the entire right side is one color and the entire left side is one color of course you can change it to be whatever you can make it a solid color if you want you can add stripes like you can do whatever you want but i do like the two color like in half type of thing and so i for the sake of like demonstration purposes like I you're supposed to join at the top later for the shoulder but I just use stitch markers to hold them in place but should I stand so this is this is the back right now this middle line is supposed to be in the back center and then this is the front half with the armhole on the side here and the shoulder kind of like held together. So it's curling up because it is stock in it. But hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, so I am working on the back right now. I love how these colors are turning up, like knitted next to each other. I think it looks really, really cute and very happy with it. So let's see, okay, the two colors I am using both from Explore Knits Denali Sock Base. The variegated color is Bryce Canyon National Park, and then the solid color or the tonal is Chinli. 
And I basically just worked a little bit more on the back, but I wanted to pick it back up again because I, I would like to have this finished object. And so this is my cute little stitch marker. So I've worked, I worked a good amount, I think, on the back this week. And I'm basically trying to work until I get to the armholes on the other side, as you can see here. So I'm not quite there, but I think I'm, I'm almost there just looking at the length I have. So that is my quick progress update on the Asu sweater. I am really looking forward to finishing like the body so that I can actually join the fronts together because once I have the body kind of like joined together and then seam the shoulders, I would like to put it on and just kind of like see how it looks and fits because it's interesting. So this is my first sweater I'm knitting sideways. And I think one thing that makes it kind of hard to kind of like measure or like gauge is like the fit because when you're working top down, you can kind of like put it on as you're going and you can kind of like just see how it lays like on your body. Bottom up is a little tough because you have nothing to like tell you where, you know, like the armholes are going to be or how long like this top part is going to be, you know, when you wear it. But at least with bottom up, you can still kind of see it growing. But for this one, it's like you can't really try it on because it, there's nothing it's just like sideways and flat. So it's very interesting. I'm just kind of like trusting the process right now. So yeah, but it's looking really cute from what I can see so far. So that is my Asu sweater. And yeah, I'm very curious to see how this works up and like what the finished object looks like because if it works out well and I really like it, then I think it's a great candidate for me to have like when I when I have like a variegated plus a tonal that I really like together to have like two skeins of each, I feel like this is a pattern that I want to have like a a pattern kind of like in mind or like if I want to get two skeins of a tonal plus two skeins of a variegated that match, I've talked about this before, but I was like those can either be separately like tank tops or t-shirts then I can knit or I can knit the half and half triangles wrap with them and it'll be really cute. And so now I'm like, as long as this pattern goes well in the end, that this could be another pattern that is like, could be the one for if I have two, two colors or two skeins of one color and two skeins of another that look cute together. So yeah, that is the Asu sweater. I don't know if I said the size, I'm making size one. And I'm using US 3 needles. Oh, I had to, I'm going to keep saying this uh, just in case anyone ever misses this information about the sweater because I think it is quite important. I had to size down my needles for this kind of a lot. I don't remember what the recommended needle size was, but I did have to size down multiple sizes. And my gauge was, it is completely off from the pattern. Uh, I don't know if maybe the designer just has very interesting gauge, but I do not know how she got that gauge. And so thankfully the pattern has measurements that you knit to as well. Like she will kind of like sometimes, or like we'll say maybe like how many rows or like to this length, which I think is great. And so I would definitely gauge, gauge swatch for this pattern, check your gauge and then just make sure Make sure that you get stitch gauge because that would be the length of your sweater and that you can't change. I think that's the one thing also about knitting sweater sideways is that you cannot adjust for length later. It is dependent on your gauge or how much stitches you cast on. So yeah, just some things to keep in mind about it. So I know I made it sound like it's a complicated 
kind of pattern, but it's actually really straightforward and honestly, like, it's pretty fun to work on. I, I'm not tired of it yet. Like, I'm not, I'm not dreading working on it. I thought maybe because it's flat and stockinette, meaning, you know, you have to knit an entire row and then knit an entire pearl row, pearl row after, like, I thought that that could get a little boring, but it's actually, it's been fine for me personally. So, I'll think that there. Okay, now we are on to our final two works in progress, and they're actually new cast ons. Okay, so I have one new cast on from last week. Last, last week. Yeah. This one is so, so fun. Okay. Actually, both of these are so fun, but okay, okay, okay. First things first, I cast on the Slightly Sassy V. It's a pattern by Amy Sure, And I am making this with a couple of friends and we are uh, using the Moon Drake Co. Fua Fua yarn base. And, oh, let me just show you. Cause I did bring, bring, bring with me the skein because I do like to look at yarn in this game, in all of its kind of like different forms. But what do I show first? Actually, let me just hold up what I have done so far. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So yes, slightly sassy V. I have joined in the round just, just, just barely and it's been going really well. This yarn is the dreamiest thing I have ever touched. It is, and I'll hold it up here for you. Look how cute it is. So again, it is Moon Drake Co. Fua Fua in the, and for me, this is the colorway Rose Quartz. It is, it says it's a fingering, but I think it might be more like lace but it is 315 yards for 50 grams it is 70 percent brushed cashmere and 30 percent superwash merino it is it is the softest thing and the fluffiest thing i've ever felt it is softer than surrey it is so fluffy it is definitely like the cashmere like that is what is so nice about this it's it is a pricey yarn. I have to say it is it is a very pricey yarn, uh, but I I think I think it's going to be a really great sweater. This is not something that I would buy all the time, but I'm very happy to have have some and have it finally being knitted with. So let me hold up what I have again. So, uh, it's just, it's just so soft and it's going to be so comfortable. Um, yeah, I don't know what else more to say because it's just, it's just so good. So I am knitting size A and I'm using US three needles. I did have to size down, but that doesn't really surprise me because I usually either use the recommended needle size or have to size down. Like I'm sometimes a loose knitter and depending on the yarn type uh, can make my gauge even looser uh, than maybe normal for other, other yarns. But yeah, so this is just what I have so far. Can't really put it on or anything. Well, I could if I put, put it on, uh, oh my gosh, if I put it on like stitch holders, but, but yeah, I, again, joined in the round. Here's the V. I think that it'll be a nice, it'll be a good depth, I think on me. And so I'm pretty happy about that. So yeah, just kind of working on this. I, oh, I got, okay. We're going to start story time a little bit because I feel like it's related and I don't want to have to keep like going back, but 
so I I bought this yarn at Flock Fiber Festival earlier this year or like in August and I was like I want a sweater quantity but I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet because this was the first time it was the first time I heard about this yarn first time that I touched it and I was like I kind of kind of need it and then Shreya uh, Stitch by Shreya. She also has a YouTube podcast. You should also watch her podcast. It is fantastic. I love her podcast so much. Whenever I see that she uploads, I'm like immediate watch. So uh, she messaged me and was like, what are you going to make with yours? Because she also got Fua Fua. And I was like, I have no idea. And she was like, I'm making a slightly sassy V. Like, do you also want to make that? And I was like, Yes, sounds good. So she is making hers in a like bright neon pink. And so I think that that's like really fun. Like we're gonna have like matching Fua Fua sweaters or tops. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what versions because this pattern has like instructions for like a short sleeve and a three quarter sleeve. I'm probably going to do the three quarter sleeve. That's kind of my plan. And I think I think friend Sharon is also making one in Fua Fua. So we're all going to have really cute, slightly sassy Vs in Fua Fua. And that makes me so happy. And then this past weekend with my other knitting friends here in Seattle, went to Bellingham. We went to Spin Cycle and they were selling Moondrake Fua Fua. And I was like, oh guys, this is like the best yarn ever. And got them to also buy some Fua Fua. I don't know what yarn, what sweaters they're planning on making or what, maybe not sweaters, but just like other things that they are going to use with it. But yeah, there's going to be more Fua Fua sweaters. Also, that's so fun to say, Fua Fua. Uh, yeah, so sorry, that was kind of rambly, but... I love this yarn. I love working with it. It's very fluffy and it's just so soft. I cannot wait to wear this sweater. But yeah, we just got started on this. So just making some slow progress. Okay. I think that's it. That's all I have for the slightly sassy V. So, okay. Last knitting project to talk about. I actually cast this on last night. So fun. This is another matching knit that I'm doing with friends. I feel like this year has been like the year of knitting matching with friends and just makes me so happy and it's so fun. It makes knitting it extra fun. Like it's just so good. I love it. Okay, so should I do story time first about this before I show you what I have? Okay, maybe. I'll try and keep it short because I know this video is already really long. So uh, my friends Emily and Maya, which I have talked about before on this podcast, Emily Curtis has a YouTube podcast as well and right now she is on a she's doing a trip all over all over the world with her husband and it looks like she's having so much fun. She's at Rhinebeck right now and uh, our knitting group misses her so much but so happy for her that she's having a great time. But okay, so Emily started uh, actually, am I going all the way back? I was like, when Emily started knitting, um, uh, knitting, spinning, I was like, oh, do I want to start spinning too? But okay, so Emily and Maya. Maya is, uh, the one who works at La Mercerie. She is the one who taught the spinning class that I was talking about on a couple weeks ago, I think I talked about, and me and my friends took her spinning her very first spinning class and it was so fun so Emily and Maya I think started spinning around the same ish time together and so it's kind of like interested in spinning around that time too and then they were talking about 
spinning yarn to make a shawl, specifically the Cinnabar shawl by Andrea Maori. And at the time, Emily was like, oh, if any of you want to join, like, feel free. And I was like, I'd love to, but also, like, can I spin that? I don't know if I could spin it, spin yarn for that. She was like, you could even just spin the contrast color. You don't have to spin all of the yarn because her and, so Emily and Maya, sorry, I like, again, I'm all, all over the place today, but Emily and Maya both spun their main color and their contrast color for the shawl. And at the time I was like, I want, I want to join in on the fun, but I will just spin the contrast color. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. So anyway, cast on day was last night. It was so fun. We did a short little FaceTime, or not FaceTime, video chat. And Megan, our friend, is also joining us. And so we had a really, really fun cast on night and yeah, I've talked about the yarn that I've spun for this before because I've I've spun it previously ready for whenever cast on was going to be. And now that I'm knitting with it, it is like, oh, feels so good. And it, it makes me so happy. There's something about knitting with hand spun that just feels incredible and makes me... I think I will love these finished objects just like even more because I'm like I spun that yarn also so it's like also like double like finished object like you finished spinning the yarn and then you get a finished like wearable thing at the end so okay let's talk about the yarn uh my main color because I am not I did not spin my main color is I am using this lovely yarn. It is De, De Rira Natura Ulysse in the color Poivre Blanc. I do not know how to say this. It will be in the description below if you want to look it up, but it is a really nice, I don't know if I want to say is heathered the right word to describe this, but it is a creamy color with some kind of like really light gray in there. And I thought that this would be really good as a contrast with my hand spun. Can you guess? It is this pink color. So this is my hand spun Corydale. The colorway is Sand Dunes from Bella Filato Studio Fibers. And I think it came out really well. I'm very happy with how this spin came out. I feel like it is fairly consistent. I love the colors and yeah, I'm just overall really excited to see how it knits up. And from what I have so far, this has been like the longest tease before I actually hold up what I have knit so far. Guys, it is so cute. It is so cute. I am so happy with how this is coming out. I like don't want to stop knitting on this. Are you ready? Here it is. <sighs> okay, so if you haven't seen this shawl or heard about it, it is not, I don't think it's a new pattern, but like I, I've always heard about the Cinnabar shawl, the Cinnabar shawl. So it feels very cool to actually be knitting on one right now. It is a shawl and it's a very interesting construction. I was not sure how it was like, when I was looking at the instructions, I was like, what is actually happening? But I, th I think it is a, it's an asymmetrical shawl, I, I wanna say. And so part of it is in garter stitch and the other part is in brioche. And I just think it's really fun to see two different textures with the same yarn. So this is the garter stitch and every other row is done with, like one row is done with the main color, the other with the contrast color. And I think it just looks really, really cute like this and then on the other side, you have a two color brioche happening. And one thing 
I didn't know. Also, I wish the lighting was better today so you could actually like see it because it looks kind of like shadowy right now. But what I didn't know is that there is kind of a strip. Let me see it, a strip where the kind of like main color of the brioche switches. So I think that that is really fun. So on this side, like the main color of the brioche is the uh, my hand spun, the pink, but then you get this nice row where like kind of like that main knit stitch of the brioche is the white color. And then on the reverse side, you get the reverse. And I think that's really fun. It's not a detail that I noticed on the, uh, the like in the pattern pictures. So I think that that's a really cool detail. And I'm just, I'm really, I'm really liking how this is turning out. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say besides I absolutely love it. I am, the more I work on this, the more I'm like really curious to see how the hand spun knits up because this was, this is the first time I am knitting. I don't think that this was my first fractal spin but this is the first time I am knitting up something that was a fractal spin. And so I'm curious to see how the colors, how the striping works and how the colors kind of look. And so far I'm really liking it. But I will say the colors are very, like the color of the fibers were very similar. And so there's not going to be any like really different colors kind of going on, but I actually really like that and prefer it. So. You can maybe see like this part's mostly like a pinky purple and then you've got like a peach and then like a gray and then it's starting to get back into like that purpley color. So yeah, once like more of it is knit up, I'm really excited to see how it all kind of grows in, in the color. So that is what I have so far. I love working with both of these yarns. This is the first time I am using the the Rara Natura Ulysse base, and it is so soft and squishy. It is so good that I am going to want to make more things with this yarn. So yeah, also makes me very happy. Okay, so, oh, another, just other details for housekeeping for this pattern. It is one size and then I am using US 6 needles. I did not gauge swatch for this. US 6 is the recommended needle size and I feel like it should be okay. So yeah, that is my Cinnabar shawl uh, that I cast on last night. And man, I cannot stop working on it. I'm just loving it so much. So. There is that one. Okay, another tea break before we move on to our next section, which is spinning. Also, um, okay, so because this video is pretty long, next section is spinning, and then I have acquisitions to talk about at the end as well. So let's get started. Spinning, okay, I have lots of finished objects for spinning as well. So I think I showed this last time, but I finally washed and skeined and finished my, I have two skeins of this fiber. So this is from the Nest Fiber Club, the colorway Paper Kites. And so this is my nicely washed and skein, skeined uh, fiber. Look how fun these colors are. It's so cute. I will say these colors did not turn out how I thought they would. It looks different than I was anticipating, but I I do like it. And then I did finish the second um, skein of this. I, I did get two braids of fiber for this, so I, I have two. And I thought, I was like, I do have, this was my first one that I finished. And so I wanted to show it to you all skeined. But I was like, maybe also because I was lazy, I didn't want to skein this. 
I will show it to you how it looks also just like all kind of loose like this. I don't know, sorry, let me do something and then stop moving. So maybe I'll hold it here so you can see it. Yeah, I love how this turned out. Again, it, I it's really hard for me to, I think, look at a hand-dyed fiber braid and kind of visualize what the finished yarn will look like. So this is not what I kind of thought it would look like, but I do like it. I did do a fractal spin on this. It is a two-ply. I think that I got a sport weight yarn out of this. And it is so good. This is the first nest fiber that I have spun and I love it so much. This was a super fine merino. This was also my first mer uh, merino spin and it is so soft and squishy and fluffy and I want to spin more merino. And as far as what I am going to knit with this, I think that I could use this as my contrast color for a pressed flowers something. I think that that would be really cute. So that is the current that is the current idea for this yarn is some some pressed flowers something. So that is that. I think maybe I think maybe the cardigan uses a sport weight because I think the shawl uses a DK weight. So I would have to double check that, but I think that this would be really cute for that. So that is my current current plans for this yarn. Oh gosh, you can't like you can see just like how how fluffy this is and how like squishy. It's so good. Okay, so that is my first spinning finished object. And then I have more. So this is also going to lend itself well to the acquisition section because I have bought some fiber that I've I've already spun. So this is a finished spin. I do wish that I could have shown you what the braid of this fiber looked like, but I really wanted to spin it, so I just spun it. I bought fiber from La Bien Amy. She had a release of her like fiber line for the first time and I really wanted it. So I got some. The shipping was incredibly fast. I was not expecting to get the fiber for some time, but I got it, I think within the week or two. So that was, it was really great. And then I was like, I need to spin it right away. So this first one that I got, I got one, little thing of the volute, volute fiber, which is 50% cashmere, 50% merino in the colorway room, Rume. And it is this really soft gray and pink color. And so this is all of it. It looks very small because it it is. It was 55 grams of fiber and yeah, uh, <laughs> I do have more things to say about this. So this was my first time spinning with, I think, I think this is my first time spinning with like a mix of fibers, but either way, it was my first time spinning with something that had cashmere in it. It is so soft. It is so soft and it is so drapey. It was kind of difficult to spin because it kept slipping out of my hands. So it did take some time and I was honestly really nervous about spinning with this because it was expensive uh, and I didn't want to mess it up. But I think I did pretty okay. I think I may have gotten maybe 90 yards 
of yarn out of it. I feel like it might be between a DK and a worsted weight, possibly. Um, but it makes a really cute skein, like a 50 gram skein. It's so cute. It's so soft. It's so drapey. I want to make some kind of like really small scarf out of this because I want it to be like against my skin because it is just really soft and I just kind of want it to shine on its own if that makes sense and so I'm thinking maybe a Sophie shawl like the really really small one I may not have enough yardage for it but it is I think my current plan for it and yeah I think I did a pretty okay job and I mean overall I'm pretty proud of it yeah so I do wish the lighting was better because the yarn just has a lot more depth and it does look more peachy pink than it does than I think it's showing up on the camera but it is I think very cute I did a two ply for this and oh I will say I watched uh, Andrea Maury's one of her videos I think it was kind of recent and she did talk about she got some of the Lobby and Amy fiber to test out and her spin of the okay so this base in the kind of like the release of the fiber there are three colors that are on this base and they're sold in you know the 55 gram like mini braids and she got kind of like I don't know if you would say it's a fade but there is like this color uh, there's like a peachy pink and then like an, another pink I think like because one's more orangey pink the other's more like actual pink and then this gray I think and she so I was like as much as I would like all three it was too expensive uh, so I just got the one but Andrea Murray spun hers as a three ply where each each ply was the different colors and it looked so cute it looks so cute and so it's still too expensive for me to do as well but like I think that that is a great idea if you have like three different but matching or they don't have to be matching if that's like your your color vibe but like three matching or colors that go well together like do one each and then ply them together for a three ply how cute so anyway that is the long story about this finished object for my spinning and then I okay as, as part of this uh, fiber release I actually the main thing that I wanted to get from this fiber release was her confetti fiber because I have been wanting to buy and knit something with the yarn confetti but I just I don't know it just I have so so much yarn that I want to knit with and so I was like I'll just like wait because it's not that it's not that important but when the fiber came out I was like oh yes I want to spin it myself and then knit with it like that would be so fun so let me first show you what it looks like in the package because this one I bought a sweater quantity ish of fiber for this because I want to make a sweater with this yarn so each of these braids is 120 grams and it is 50% 18.5 merino and 30% Shetland and 20% recycled LBA threads which is like those neon pops of kind of like a little oh my gosh what's the word like tweed kind of tweed tweedy bits okay so this is what it looks like it comes in a bag like this and this is what the braid looks like it looked I was very surprised at how kind of like small it looked compared to like the other fiber that I've gotten in braids which look fat but these are like it's just like really it's skinnier but longer if that makes sense 
So yeah, but this is kind of like what that fiber looks like. So cute, so soft. I was really surprised at how soft this fiber felt and so that made me very happy. And then I have already finished spinning two skeins of it. Yay, so I can show it to you. So this is my very first <laughs> finished spin of that fiber. Uh, it looks so cute. It looks so fluffy. And those pops of like neon tweedy bits are just so cute. It looks so chunky. Uh, I love how it looks. So this one has already been washed and all that good stuff. So it looks, it looks, it looks pretty nice. I do have my second one that I just finished plying this morning. And so I did not wash it yet and it looks crazy. There are pigtails everywhere, but, and so I was like not going to show it on the podcast, but I was like, let me just show it to you because I feel like ever since I started spinning, I've been like trying to search for more content, more spinning content. And I'm sure that they're definitely out there and there's a lot out there, but sometimes I want to see like the in-between sections or like what the fiber turns into in different sections of the spinning until the end. And I didn't know in the beginning that like washing, like finishing your fiber is like a thing. It's kind of like blocking your knits. Like it just kind of like smooths, smooths things out and kind of relaxes the yarn maybe a little bit and just like finishing your yarn is a thing. And so I do want to show this, but okay, it does look crazy and maybe I've made mistakes. I don't know, but it's very, it's very pigtaily. But again, I want to show you the differences between one that is completely finished and one that is like freshly plied. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, this this is the one that is freshly plied. There are pigtails everywhere, which is just like the yarn is uh, twisting on itself. Ooh, I'm gonna try to hide my face so you can see that. So all of these parts that are sticking out is just like the yarn twisting on itself because of all of that twist from plying and I'm pretty sure that they are going to go away when I wash it because this one was kind of like this before I washed it so but I do just want to show you the differences and that finishing your yarn does matter uh yeah wow this one looks crazy uh, but I'm very proud of it. I'm very happy with how it came out. It is so fun to spin, uh, even though it's like kind of a solid color. I think the tweedy bits of it just like add that extra like fun, like, ooh, there's like a neon pink or like, ooh, there's like a neon yellow. So it's overall just been really fun to spin. I did buy five braids of this, and so I've got three more to go. And I am hoping that it is enough to knit a sweater. I think to be safe, I should have gotten a six one, but we are going to do our best with the five. So yeah, so that is this fiber, really fun. Um, yeah, there it is, there it is. Okay, next up, okay, I do have two more finished spins. <laughs> um, Okay, but maybe these will be pretty quick to talk about, I hope. So I did some experimenting. Oh, I'm going to go back about to talk about this. But okay, I did some experimenting because I it seems like spinning lends itself really well to experimenting, which I don't think I want to do too much because I do actually want to like knit with the thing, the yarn that I have spun. But there's some things I wanted to try. So one of those things is I wanted to try a three ply, uh, but more specifically a chain ply because I've seen people do this and I was like, wow, it looks so cool to do that. I want to learn how to do that. So it's 
if you know how to crochet, it's kind of like just making a single uh, chain or like making crocheting a chain, but you do that in a bigger, longer scale with one strand of like your single fiber that you've spun. And then your end result is kind of like a three ply type of yarn. And so I wanted to try that, but not on like a really, not on a yarn that I had plans for a project for. So what I did was I have like that bag of hedgehog fiber, hedge, hedgehog fibers, hedgehog fibers, fiber, <laughs> where it's just kind of like, I think it's called a lucky dip. It's just like kind of random small bits of fiber of different colors. And so I spun that and then I tried a chain ply. So this is the resulting yarn. It is pretty crazy looking. I did not wash this yet. So there are some like pigtails here. But yeah, this is my first chain ply and it was very fun. I had to start and stop kind of a lot to get used to the motion, but it was really fun and I definitely want to chain ply again. So yeah, I don't think that you will be able to like see anything like a difference between this and a two ply from the camera. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you that I did a little sample of a chain ply and it was really fun. I enjoyed it. And then I also wanted to experiment doing a long draw and I know, okay, I'm really, there's so much to learn about fiber and spinning, but I wanted to try a long draw, which looks magical when you watch someone do it. Because the way that I think most people learn how to spin is like a short forward draw. And so the motion looks like you're doing this with your fiber when you're like kind of pinching out the fiber and then uh, kind of like smoothing it out to spin. But the long draw, again, this could all be technically wrong. I might be saying something wrong, but I'm trying to just get the idea across. And then the long draw, when you see someone do it, they're just like holding their fiber and they're kind of just like doing this. And then as they're doing it, like the fiber is getting spun and then they feed it into the, the bobbin and then they go like this. And then and they feed it to me. And I was like, I want to learn how to do that. So I think that there is, there is a distinction between like maybe a traditional or just like long draw versus a supported long draw. And I think the supported long draw is supposed to be easier because you are, instead of just kind of like only using this one hand to get that fiber uh, spun and like drawn out, you are like pinching with one hand to kind of control the twist. So I was experimenting with that and uh, on our weekend getaway, our, uh, we called it our Rhinebeck Constellation weekend. Last weekend uh, with friends, we were playing with fiber and spinning, and so I wanted to try a long draw. And I, okay, I guess we'll kind of start with acquisitions. Last weekend, I bought a ladybug spinning wheel, and I'm really happy with it. I have been spinning with it almost every day since I got it. I will, if I remember, I will put a picture of my wheel here and yeah, so we were playing with it. Uh, me and Megan were both during that weekend spinning on it. And Megan brought this fiber for us to kind of just play around with. And so it is, this is also the first time I have spun with Rambouillet. And so that was also a really cool experience. And so Megan provided this fiber. And then I told her, I would finish spinning it and then give her the end results. And so hopefully it is okay and good enough uh, to give away as a thank you to Megan. Uh, this is, I do not know who dyed this or where this fiber is from, but it is Rambouillet and the color is Aster Violet. It's really pretty. Uh, not really my color, but really pretty. <laughs> And this was mostly done with me doing a long draw. And so it is a little thick and thin because new technique. So definitely not 
uh, that consistent, but I think overall it actually looks not terrible. And I would want to spin with this fiber again. It feels very soft and squishy. And so I did not, I also did not finish this. I did not wash this yarn yet, but I will do that before I give it to Megan. And yeah, I think it looks really cute. Okay, so, okay, so that is, that is all the fiber. But with that being said, I need to talk about this uh, fiber again, because I am spinning this long draw or supported long draw. And I know that technically long draw is a woolen spun technique for woolen prepped fibers. And I am using a, a worsted prep fiber. It is not I, I don't want to get too much into the details because I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I am doing a supported long draw uh, spinning technique to make this yarn. And I think that maybe that's why it's so uh, fluffy. Oh, I want to say the reason why I decided to do that for this fiber as well is because I watched Amy Schur's video where she was spinning this fiber and she said she thinks that the best way to spin it would be a kind of long draw technique and I think from what I have I didn't even know she made videos and I feel like how did I not know about that but so I've been trying to catch up on her videos but she I think that she spins mostly long draw like that is her favorite method for whatever way the fiber is prepped I think and so I think that that means that ending result is a semi woolen or semi worsted end product. If I am wrong, please let me know in the comments down below and correct me because I'm still learning, but I am just throwing out words that I've learned and we're trying to use them. We're trying to use them in my vocabulary. So, okay, so that is that. And then Let's move on to acquisitions. So I do have fiber acquisitions, but don't worry because if you're not here for the fiber content, I do also have some yarn acquisitions. But since I am on the spinning kind of train, we will talk about my fiber acquisitions. So as I've said, I have bought a ladybug spinning wheel. I bought it from Northwest Yarns in, um, Oh my gosh, I completely blanked. Anyway, our weekend, uh, last weekend with friends, we went to Northwest Yarns. This was my first time going to their store. And they had a whole bunch of wheels that we could try. And so we got to try a lot of wheels, or not a lot. I, we tried a couple, but I basically was like, I already had my eye on the ladybug because Emily and Maya have the ladybug and they love it. And I was like, I also want a ladybug spinning wheel. It is by Shocked. That's the company. I think that that's how you say the name. And thankfully, Northwest Yarns did have one in stock, and I got to try it. I loved it, and so I, I, I bought it. And I'm very happy with it. I, man, it's just so cute. If you don't know about the spinning wheel, I think what's really cute about it is that it, each one has a little ladybug on it but in like a unique place for each one. So no one has one in like the same place. And I think that that's really, really, really cute. I also really like how this wheel felt and I was interested to see how would it feel different than the Kromsky wheels that we used during the class at La Mercerie. Since that was the first wheel I've ever used, I was just like, I don't know how other ones feel. And so it was cool to at least try a couple more to see what the differences were. For me, the ladybug just felt a bit more sturdy. It almost, honestly, in the beginning was a little hard to work with in terms of like the petals. Also the petals were kind of had more surface area. So I kind of felt like it just felt good to have like that room for my feet. But in the beginning, it kind of felt like I had to press really hard and kind of like have like the right leverage to have to push the petals down but I did like kind of having the more 
I don't want to say weight because it's actually a really light wheel. I think it's 13 pounds. It's super easy to carry around and the, the handles on it also makes it really easy to carry. But like I liked having it feel just more sturdy and 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 yeah, just more sturdy. I did oil it, which really, really helped. So now I'm not pressing that hard on the pedals. Things are moving. It's all good. So make sure you oil your wheel is what I have learned. And yeah, it's easy to car carry around. I think it is a slightly shorter than the Kromsky wheels that we use because it fit into the car a little bit easier like to put it into the back seat. And the only thing though is that when you exchange out the bobbins, like when you put in a new bobbin or take off a bobbin, like when you're done with your spinning, the Kromsky wheels was were really nice. You just pulled the whole thing off and you're good to go. This one, you have to like unscrew something. You have to like pull it out and then pull it out of like two different places. So it's a bit more, a bit more finicky, I will say. But overall, I just really wanted the Ladybug spinning wheel. And so I'm very happy with that purchase. And when you buy in person at the store, you get a free one pound of fiber and you can choose what fiber as long as it is less than, I think less than $3 an ounce, I think of those, fi of those fibers, you can get one pound free, which was so good, such a deal. And so I definitely took advantage of that. And then I also bought more fiber because they had some fiber that I, again, like, because I'm still new, I haven't spun with like a whole bunch of different fibers yet. And so I want to just like try a whole bunch of different fiber. Okay, so I have them all, oh gosh, I have them all in a bag here. So let's try to get through them quickly. Okay, so the fiber that I decided to get for free, instead of one pound of one type, I split that up. So I got, I believe that that would be eight ounces of one and then eight ounces of another fiber. So I believe the ones that I got was, also I think it's so cute that the five, you can like roll up, wind up the fiber into like a ball like this. So this one I got is a gray baby alpaca top. And so it looks like this, it is really soft. I haven't spun with alpaca yet, and so this will be a very interesting spin, I think. It is very loose. Like, there's a lot of fibers that's just kind of, like, coming apart. So, yeah, I just got to be a little careful, I think, with this one, but it's really soft, and I'm very excited about this one. And then the other one, I got eight ounces. Yeah, eight ounces was the, so there's an 18.5 micron, super fine merino top. And it is a white color. And so my plan is that I will split this up into four ounces, four ounces. And I want to do some hand dyeing on some merino fiber. So uh, yeah, my plan for this is to do some hand, hand dyed fiber experiments on this because my other uh, fiber, hand-dyed fiber, went, I think, really well, and so I just want to continue doing that. And so, yeah, I got some more white merino fiber this time, though, and so we'll see how merino uh, dyes up. So that's really exciting. It is very soft because it is 18.5 micron, so that should be good. This should be a good one to spin. And then the other fibers that I decided to buy while we were there are very, I think, to me, at least very exciting. So I got, I believe, four ounces of each of these. So I got, look at this brown. This is de-haired yak top. It looks so cool. Um, it also feels really soft. It feels different. I do not know how to describe how these fibers feel because I'm like, alpaca also felt soft. The merino also felt soft, but I think the alpaca just felt weightier and 
mm, do I want to say slippery? Maybe a little slippery versus this one, but this one just feels extra fluffy and airy, which I don't know if that has anything to do with like how the fiber was prepped, like how compressed it is and all of that. So I think spinning it will really kind of like, we'll see how they all kind of like are different, I think. But yeah, I wanted to try this yak because that sounded really cool and it's very soft. And then this other one, I'm really interested. Uh, this is a, it says it was a local gray CVM. I've never spun with CVM before and it looks like this. And I am kind of wondering if this would be considered a woolen prepped fiber because it doesn't quite look all of the other like top fibers look like they were I'm still learning by the way but they all kind of look the, like the hairs are all going in the same direction like in one direction like for this one they all just look straight but this one looks not straight like if I went like this they all are kind of in different directions like they're not really all combed I think in the same direction and, and it's so airy because so even though this is like the same this is uh the same ounces as the yak like it's a much bigger ball and I think it's just because there's so much air trapped in this fiber and so I'm like this might be my first like woolen prepped fiber to spin. I could actually maybe do a long draw on this and see how that feels differently. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited about this. It feels very cool. I'm very excited to see how, what the resulting spin of this looks and feels like. And so, yeah, wow, so cool. So much fiber, so much things to learn about. Okay, and then that is all, all. That is it for the fiber. Let's move back to the yarn world here. I mean, they're all related. Fiber turns into yarn, but okay. Let's talk about the hand dyed yarn. I have a couple acquisitions here. So, okay, got some good ones. So let's first talk about, let's first talk about the Woolberry. So I got some Woolberry uh, yarn in. So one is from The Collective. I don't think I've talked about this before, but if I did, sorry, I can't remember. But oh, I, got I got the Berry Merino base in the colorway It's Bread, B-R-E-D, as in brown red. And this is what it looks like. I actually really like how this color looks. I would have loved to get a sweater quantity of this, uh, but I just have too much yarn. Uh, but I really wanted the color, so I settled for, I think I got three skeins of this. Uh, but I do really like this color. I hope she brings it back in the hopes that by the time she brings it back, maybe, if she does, I don't know if she's going to, but I'm just saying, if she does bring it back, hopefully by then I will have work through most of my yarn stash and then can get a sweater quantity of this because I think it's really pretty. I do really like this. And I do think that the it's bread description is quite, it works. It looks more red on camera than it does in person. So it definitely, it is more brown than on camera, but uh, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say about that, but I really like it. So there is that order. And then I did buy from the from the Woolberry's seventh birthday, I think. She had like three colors uh, for that kind of like little celebration. And so I got I got some 
of the Happy Birthday Woolberry colorway, which was, ugh, it's such a, such a cute color. It's like that purpley blue with a peachy pink and on a cream base. So yeah, this is Happy Birthday Woolberry. I got on Berry Surrey. I did get a sweater quantity of the Surrey because Surrey sweater season. And I love this color. I also got that same colorway on the Berry Natural Base because I think it looks so soft and nice on the Berry Natural Base, which is the uh, Woolberry's non superwash base. It is a 20.5 micron merino, and I love how this base feels. I have it on the DK and the fingering base, and I love how it feels. It is so soft and squishy, and I love it. And so I wanted to get it on this base. And then part of this, the Happy Birthday Woolberry, she also had the, I don't know what month it was. Was it September? Uh, she had one of the colors be the Rewind color, and so for this one, it was the bouquet colorway, which I have gotten before, but not on the Berry Natural base, and so I thought I would get it this time on, I got one skein on the Berry Natural base, and I think it looks so cute on this base, because a lot of the times on the non-superwash bases, the colors kind of look a bit more, more pastel or just kind of lighter, and I think for this pink, it looks perfect. So I'm very happy to have uh, one skein of this. And then for this next order, this is my first order from Sunday Fiber Co. I know it's kind of hard to believe because a lot of her colorways are very me. Uh, and so I am also surprised that I haven't bought anything from her. But I think a few weekends ago, she had an in-stock update and free shipping to the U.S. and or was it to other places too but she had free shipping and so I thought a great way for me to finally get some yarn from her and I picked out two skeins on her Kindred Fingering base. It is a 100% untreated organic merino wool. It is four ply fingering weight 437 yards for 100 grams. And I got two skeins on the colorway Candy Mountain. And I think they look so cute, so pastel, soft, and pretty, and like fairy-like. And I am very happy with how they look. I do not have current plans for it, but I think with two skeins, there is a lot of possibilities for me to use to use them but right now I just want to hang them up or put them somewhere where I can just look at and admire at how pretty they are. So this will not be the last time that I shop from Sunday Fiber Co. But this will do for now. I'm very happy to have my first order from them. And so yeah. Okay, so that is it for the acquisitions. This video is really long and it is now getting a little dark. So we will try and wrap this up pretty quickly, but I did want to talk about the fun weekend that I just kept kind of like putting in here, talking about uh, last weekend with my friends here in Seattle. We went to, uh, I was going to say Bainbridge Island. We went to Bellingham uh, to... Most of it was like we wanted to have a knit weekend away where we could just like stay indoors at an Airbnb and knit together. Uh, but we were also like, while we're, we should go to Bellingham because then we can check out Northwest Yarns because there were some of us who wanted to look at spinning wheels and also Spin Cycle is up there and I've never been, I've never been to both stores. So that was a really cool and fun experience to do with friends and we had a great time. I... I bought a spinning wheel, so that was, it was, I would say, a successful trip in all ways. Be, like, you know, successful because we all made it. We all had a great time. Uh, 
We had a lot of knitting time together at the Airbnb. We had really good food. We bought yarn. I bought a spinning wheel, bought some fiber, and we took some amazing finished object pictures. We all brought some, we took this opportunity to get some pictures, uh, finished object pictures done. And so right outside our Airbnb, it was, it was, we were like right by the water. And so we got some really nice like background for our pictures and we took some really cute pictures. And so I, on my Instagram, I did already post one of my big cozy Cardi because I didn't get pictures of that yet. And so we took pictures of that. Uh, and man, that was such a great time. It was so much fun. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not really, I feel like I'm not really great with words in terms of like, yeah, just this describing things. And so, yeah, which is not the best for someone who has a knitting podcast and I'm supposed to talk about all the things, but I had a really great time. Megan, who also has a podcast, talks more about it in her video and she does also post more pictures about all the fun things that we we did. So definitely check her video out to, to know more about it, but overall we had such a great time. It was such a, I feel like, Interestingly, we didn't get as much knitting done as I thought we would, but it's because we were having fun doing other things like eating food and taking uh, pictures of all of our finished objects. Uh, Sylvan is the best like hype person when taking pictures. Uh, she was really fun. Uh, just basically telling all of us that we are so cute, we're so pretty, we're so beautiful and to hold poses. Everyone had such great ideas for poses. I was like, this is perfect because I never know what to do for a pose. I feel like my default is always like hand on hip, but I was like, I don't want all of my pictures to just be the same pose. And so we've had some really good ideas. Everyone else had really great ideas. And I was like, yes, please tell me what to do with my arms and my hands. And so it was all really great. And it was really fun. And I had a great time. And yeah, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I am probably missing something because two weeks is a long time for my brain to remember everything that has happened, but I think that is it. We are going to finish this podcast because I think that it's been, oh, it's been a long one. I just checked the time. So I hope that you are all having a great day on whichever day you're watching this. Please let me know in the comments down below what you have been working on while listening or watching this podcast because I love to get new ideas for yarn and projects and patterns and stuff like that. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to let me know and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I am also on Instagram. My name, my name on Instagram, my tag is Airy Knits, same name as this podcast. And I am trying my best to post more finished object pictures and especially my spinning. So, I mean, you definitely watching this podcast get more up-to-date updates on things that I'm working on and finishing. But I do try to post like actual pictures on my Instagram of finished objects. So, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I, oh... I will not be posting a video next weekend. I'm so sorry. I am going uh, to an ice skating competition, not competing in one. I'm just going to watch one and I will, I can talk more about it after, after the trip. But yeah, so unfortunately no video next week. I'm so sorry. But so we're going to have another, the next episode will be another two week update, which is just going to be so long, but maybe not as long as this one, because I don't plan on buying fiber anytime soon so yeah because this was this video was a lot uh but i hope you enjoyed it again hope you have the, a great rest of your day and i will talk to you in two weeks bye